What up, guys? Your boy Quake, and I'm back with a brand new episode of the Diverse Mentality Podcast, number 76. And my co host Vito is not here, he's out in New York. Uh, shout out to him. So it's me, Solo Dolo. Shout out to Dizzy Wright. Uh, if you know that record, Solo Dolo is a fire track. If you haven't checked it out, by the way, shout out to Dizzy Wright. Um, I'm gonna be honest with you guys, man. I'm not really in the best of moods. Um, I don't know. I've been really thinking about quitting YouTube in general. I don't know. I've been stuck in this weird, um, weird like creative space where I just don't like what I'm making. I don't really like the content. I've been having to scrap a lot of content and, uh, yeah, just a weird space, man. I don't know. It's, it's a weird feeling. Um, but I feel like everybody goes through this. So maybe just today I'm feeling like that. I don't know, but it's been in the back of my mind for a little bit. Um, why, I guess, if you want to ask, I don't know. I just feel like, I don't know. I, I haven't done everything that I want to do in YouTube yet, but I feel like the agenda that I was pushing initially is happening. What I mean by that is when I first got into YouTube in 2017, I was scouting, you know, I was scouting YouTube, looking at hip hop content. And a lot of it was just um, half-assed content that wasn't detailed documentary wise. And um, now there's really a lot of people doing that, creating long documentaries, creating great documentaries. Uh, one of my favorites, Trap Lore Ross. You know, he's skyrocketed. He's creating long documentary formats that I basically do. And um, and he's doing a great job at it. Hell, he's doing a better job than me that I've been doing recently. So, I don't know. I feel like I've done, I've pushed, you know, hip-hop in terms of content forward because of that. Because I didn't see anybody doing it before me. Um, and yeah, just other people are doing better content right now. I don't know. Me, I'm just not in the space that I want to be creatively, I guess. It's hard to put into words. But then again, I might just be feeling like this today. Um, but I want to be honest with you guys. I'm always going to be transparent on how I'm feeling. And this is the mood that I'm in. And I don't know. I don't know. I have videos that's in the works. Lots of videos that's in the works that I've scrapped. Uh, the DMX documentary, I've scrapped that a few times. Um, I got the 50 versus Jay-Z video that I'm working on. I've I've probably scrapped that. I don't even know how many times I started this way, did it this way, this, this. I don't know. Maybe I just, maybe I'm comparing my old content too much to the new stuff that I want to deliver and putting this unnecessary pressure on myself that I don't need to be putting on myself. It just really, it's mental gymnastics. It's a mental game. And, you know, it's like when an artist gets writer's block, when they just can't write for some reason. That's really how, this is just the YouTuber version of it. I don't know. Uh, creator's block, I guess. And yeah. Um, like I said, I never got into this shit for money. Um, you know, if I really, really, really wanted to, I could have cashed out on the channel probably earlier this year. A record label offered me a good amount of money to buy the whole channel. Um, but I never, like I said, I never chased money, even with my website. I did the website thing for three to four years for free without a single penny. And the money just kind of, the money comes when you're, you really like what you do. You really have passion. You really care about what you do. When you're just chasing the money, it can come, but it's just, you're not really doing it because you want to do it. You're just doing it just to kind of get financial success out of it, which is fine. If that's the way you like to do things, you know, you build them up, you sell them, build them up, sell them. A lot of people do that. They'll build up companies and just sell them. Um, but that's never really been me. Uh, I could have sold the website that originally had diversehiphop.com for a good amount of money. I never did because I never wanted anybody to tarnish that name. I kind of wanted to keep it to myself. I still have that domain. It's mine forever. Um, so yeah, with this channel, I'm just I'm in a weird space. So that's why videos haven't come out. Um, and, you know, I promised this video, I promised that video and just, you know, hell, I lost sponsorship deals because of how much I haven't put out content. I was supposed to do a couple sponsorship deals. They fell, which is fine. I understand. Uh, I'll never rush content for a sponsorship deal. Um, and yeah, that's just, that's just how I'm feeling right now. 
you know. And I just wanted to let you guys know that that's how I'm feeling. Um, am I saying I'm quitting? No, but don't be surprised if down the line that's what comes. You know, um, I've appreciated the support I've gotten. Um, but yeah, I just, I don't know. I'll figure it out probably, hopefully. Uh, speaking of content and someone who hasn't delivered a lot of content, Kendrick Lamar. Uh, this is the first thing I wanted to talk about because kind of um, reading it kind of made me reflect on my own self. And I guess taking a break is something that's important, not only for your mental health, but just in general. And Kendrick just randomly uh, tweeted a link to his website, Oklama. That's how you pronounce oklama.com forward slash new thoughts and you thoughts. And in this, he writes out his thoughts. It's very interesting too. Um, let's go over. He said, I spend most of my days with fleeting thoughts, writing, listening, and collecting old beach cruisers. The morning rides keep me on a hill of silence. That's very well written. Of course, he's a writer. I go months without a phone, which I actually want to try, by the way. Love, loss, and grief have disrupted my comfort zone, but the glimmers of God speak through my music and family. While the world around me evolves, I reflect on what matters the most, the life in which my words will land next. As I produce my final TDE album, I feel joy to have been a part of such a cultural impact after 17 years. The struggles, the success, most importantly, the brotherhood. May the Most High continue to use Top Dog as a vessel for candidate creators as I continue to pursue my life's calling. There's beauty in completion and always faith in the unknown. Thank you for keeping me in your thoughts. I prayed for you all. See you soon enough. With a photo of him in the studio. Now, uh, the thing that caught everyone's attention was that he said, I, as I produce my final TDE album. How I'm interpreting this, <clears throat> sorry, how I'm interpreting this is, it's just his final TDE album. It's not his final album. I just don't see Kendrick Lamar retiring. Um, You know, really no artist, if you really look at it, no hip-hop artist has officially retired. Um, they usually say they're going to retire. They come back a couple of years later. It's happened with Jay-Z. It's happened with The Game. It's happened with so many artists. You know, 50 at one point said if Kanye beats him, he's going to retire. Uh, so many artists have said they're, they're going to retire. It just never really happens. Um, so I don't see it as as Kanye, I mean, not Kanye, but Kendrick Lamar. I'll, speak, I'll be speaking about Kanye later, but Kendrick Lamar, I don't see it as him retiring. I see it as him just doing the contractual obligation that he had with TDE, finishing that up. Because usually when an artist signs with a label, it's usually a four to five album deal, unless it's a shitty deal and you got like an eight album deal. Sometimes people, artists get stuck in those shitty deals and those are the worst. Uh, it's usually a four to five album deal and Kendrick has delivered that. And there's nothing wrong with that. If he moves on from TDE and does his own thing, more power to him. The, the the owner of TD, Top Dog, actually even responded to it. Uh, I'll go over his thing quickly before I after, before I break this down, though. Um, so he goes on to say, love, loss, and grief have disrupted my comfort zone. Yeah, I mean, a lot has happened since Kendrick's last album, 2017. Um. I hope he speaks on a lot of things, especially the Nipsey Hussle thing. That's the one I always point out. But I'm sure, you know, there's been moments where he's wanted to say something, but he's held it in on the music because he never really tweets, never really posts anything. So there's been a lot of cultural things. I mean, just last year, in the summer of last year, Black Lives Matter, that whole movement, you know, with George Floyd, Lil Baby having to say something. Like Lil Baby stepped up and dropped a bigger picture. I'm sure he wanted to say something. I'm sure there was moments where he's like, 
man, this would have been a great time for me to say something. But I think, like you said, there's beauty and completion. I think him taking his time, finally saying something and getting fans um, hyped, I think this album is going to be something special. I like when artists take their time. Now, granted, what, 2017, 18, 19, 20, 21, you're looking at four or five years. If you count 2017 instead, you can just go to 2018, 2019, 2020, 2021. So four years, technically, if you count 2017 as the album release. Um, that's a long time. Four years, that's a long, long time. The last time, I always, this is kind of crazy. The last time Kendrick dropped an album, I officially started my YouTube channel. Like, think about that. That was the, f I started in April, 2017. And he dropped his album, I believe, in March 2017. So the last time Kendrick released a full-length album, I officially started my YouTube channel. And it's crazy. It's crazy. You know, he said, I spend most of my days with fleeting thoughts, writing, and listening. I can relate. Um, while the world around me evolves, I reflect on what matters the most. That's important to mental health. Being without a phone, I've thought about that quite a few times. Just, you know, I deleted social media. I've done that where I've taken breaks off social media, but just getting rid of the phone completely. Uh, just kind of taking it and enjoying life. I understand. I understand what Kendrick's talking about. And, you know, I hope this album comes soon. He said, see you soon enough. He says there's beauty in completion, so the, that might mean the album is done. And, you know, we'll see. So Top Dog responded because people were like, you know, oh, he's leaving TDE and, you know, how does Top Dog, the owner, feel and all this. Uh, this is what he had to say. The whole goal when we started this thing was to make music, make money and make history. We did those things 10 times over and then some. TDE and its artists have provided a way to end generational curses that we were all personally born into over the last 17 years in this business. With this being Dot's last album on TDE, this is more of a victory lap, a celebration. I know he will be successful in whatever it is he decides to do and will have our full support. As for Top Dog Entertainment, we will continue to grow, develop, and give artists the platform to expand in whatever way they choose. Heart honor, respect, top dog. That's exactly how a label is supposed to react. Shout out to top dog. You know, when Isaiah Rashad was going through his own drug problems, he didn't give up on him as an artist. You could have just wrote him off as a, as a tax write-off and been like, oh, it's a loss and just kicked him off the label. But no, he got him help. And now Isaiah Rashad has one of the best albums out this year. You could argue at least. Um, so, yeah, this this is a victory. This is a celebration. Now, will will Kendrick will start his own label and do his own thing, possibly? But I, I think Kendrick will stay with TDE. I really do think that. I think. I just don't see him leaving, because he's represented that for so long. It's like, I don't know how to put it. It's like Lloyd Banks leaving G Unit. You know, it just, yeah, he's out of G-Unit, right? But is he officially out of G-Unit? Is, do we, do we, when we look at G-Unit, do we just X out Lloyd Banks? No, we don't. Because Lloyd Banks has been part of that for so long that it just, it's, it's like Drake with Young Money. He's still in Young Money. Everybody views him as a cash money artist at the end of the day. Yeah, I mean, he's Drake. He's the biggest thing ever. But at the end of the day, you still tie the person to their original roots. It's like, uh, I don't know. Because like usually where you start your career, you're always tied to that no matter what. It's like Snoop Dogg, no matter, even if he left Aftermath or or he just never signed Aftermath, but when he left um, Death Row, you know, people still viewed him as Dr. Dre's protege, his artist. Eminem too, he never left, obviously, Aftermath and Dr. Dre's label, but if he were to leave, people would still view him as that. You know, it wouldn't be, I don't know, I think... The only reason Kendrick said my final TDE album is because he's just talking about contractual obligations. I don't think he's gonna going to leave. 
<clears throat> even if he does, like I said, people are still going to view him as a TDE artist because that's where he started. And yeah, I just, I don't know why it was like such a big, oh, people thought it was going to be his last album. It's definitely not his last album. I can't see Kendrick quitting hip hop, especially this early. He's still, even though he's a couple albums in, he still has a lot more I think he can give. And yeah, I don't know what to expect from this album. I really don't. You know, uh, when they when they asked the producers or when he did an interview with the magazine announcing the other artists I mentioned a while ago, Kendrick um, said he's chasing a new sound. He's chasing something that's completely different. So expect something totally different, which is great about Kendrick albums. None of them sound the same. They're totally different experiences. Um, if Kendrick were a new artist and dropped Damn, if Kendrick were a new artist and dropped To Pimp Butterfly or Section 80 or even Good Kid, Mad City, um, these albums all sound different. They sound like different people. Um, so that's the beauty in Kendrick's work is that nothing sounds the same. That's a lot of, that really is a lot of the reason why people don't like Kendrick too. You know, there's a few people that don't like Kendrick because the albums don't sound the same. You know, he switches completely different to something that's totally different. And people, some people don't like that. People like consistency in the music, but you have to grow as an artist. Uh, staying the same is definitely going to hinder your growth and people are going to eventually put you in the back burner and say you're old and washed up. So uh, I'm, I'm excited. I'm excited for the album. And I'm curious. I don't really care if it has features or not. If it does has features, who would I want on the album? It all depends on what he's going for. Do I want a Kendrick Lamar and Lil Baby track? Yeah, I want that. That would be dope. Do I want a Kendrick Lamar and I don't know what artists out there that he hasn't worked with. I want somebody he hasn't worked with because he's already done Eminem. He's done Drake. He's done 50 cents already worked with him. Um, lots of artists he's already worked with. I don't know. I don't know what to expect. I don't know what kind of tracks to get. I don't know what kind of artists to be on there. Do I really care for features? No. Who gives a shit if there's a feature or not. I could really care less. Uh, I just want the new album. And obviously when this album was announced, um, Kanye West and Drake, people were like, yo, they're going to get worried. They, you know, now Kendrick's dropping. You got Kanye, you got Drake. Now you got Kendrick all in the mist. Kind of, we don't know when the fuck their albums are going to come out. So speaking of Kanye and Drake, uh, a lot has happened between them. <laughs> and now it's officially on like the beef is back. You know, first it was like subliminals, little slight subliminals. Now it's Kanye versus Drake again. And, this is just a lot of shit has happened. So initially on July 20th, this is a timeline breakdown. Initially on July 20th, uh, rumors surfaced that Kanye West and Drake were friends. So there are a few people tweeting. Um, you know, one person said Drake should be petty and drop certified level boy on Friday, which was the time when Kanye was supposed to drop his album. Uh, somebody responded, I'd put money on it. He does the laughing emoji, but then Karen civil said, they are friends now. He's not going to, LOL. So people assumed, you know, Karen Silva is pretty connected into the industry. People assumed that Kanye West and Drake are cool now, and, you know, there would be no tension. A couple days later, uh, Kanye West collaborated, which Consequence says they're looking for Drake's drop date. So he tweeted, we're looking for Drake drop date. Uh, Swiss Beats, line it up, drop you low. So they're asking, when is Drake going to drop his album? Then, of course, a couple days later on July 30th, Drake sent a warning message on his radio show, uh, Sound 42. Um, he said the album's cook, certified lover boy on the way, and that's for anyone in the way, which is clearly a shot at Kanye because he was getting gearing up to drop his album. Um, so, yeah, they're going back and forth being bitches about who's going to release their album. Then, of course, on August 5th, when Kanye held the second listening party in Atlanta here, um, he added a couple bars to his track with Playboy Cardi. He added some lyrics that seemed to take shots at Drake with, with the release date <clears throat> drama. He said in his bars, move out the way of my release, trying to get me off my Q's and P's. Why can't losers never lose in peace? Ain't nobody around me losing sleep. Better find God for he find me. So there you go. Talking about release dates again. 
Then you had members of Drake and Kanye's camp exchanging words on Instagram. Um, he posted, uh, one of the people posted Drake's shoes with Nike. Um, and then Chubbs responded to one of Kanye's people saying, uh, see us outside. And, you know, Drake responded laughing and just people dissing each other's fashion. You know, Drake's with Nike and now Kanye's with Adidas. All this shit really is just promotion for their albums without really being promotion for their albums. It's promotion for their albums. They're just talking shit back and forth because now everybody's, all their eyes, all the eyes are on Kanye and Drake. And now, honestly, I really give a shit more about Kendrick's album. I could give a fuck less about Kanye or Drake's right now because they're both being bitches and sissies back and forth about album release days. Just fucking drop the albums. You guys are grown men. This is really stupid. Um, following... Weeks after that, uh, Trippy Red dropped its album and then later on added a new Drake verse to one of the tracks. And he sends direct shots at Kanye. I like that they're not really subliminals on this. It's about damn time uh, Drake stopped sending subliminals, but he rapped in the track, All These Fools, I'm beefing that I barely know. 45, 44, burned out, let it go. Ye, ye ain't changing shit for me. It's set in stone. Um, so yeah, he basically sent shots also at Pusha T and Consequence because they're each 44 years old. So 45, 44 burned out. <laughs> yeah. He's just basically saying they're old as fuck and you need to stop. So Consequence ended up responding to those bars and said, fuck a betrayal. It's the disrespect for me. Dog with trippy red shotgun. Respect my team. It's party time. Queens all day. Now what happened a couple days later on August 21st, which was just recently. Um, this is the weirdest shit ever because I've never seen something like this. So there's eight people in a group chat that Kanye West posted on his Instagram. Uh, presumably, the ones that we know 100% is Pusha T, Drake, and I assume Virgil because of the previous text messages. So Kanye posted the text message screenshot. It says, you added Pusha T to push it to the conversation. And then he sent... Uh, the Joker picture from the new Joker movie. Not new, but the latest Joker movie. Uh, and in the text, he said, I live for this. I've been fucked with by nerd-ass jock guys like you my whole life. You will never recover, I promise you. Which is... <laughs> which is just like... <laughs> like... I don't know what the fuck. So he called him a nerd ass jock, which is a great explanation of what Drake is. He kind of is a nerd ass jock. That's a good way of executing it, Kanye. You will never recover, I promise you. So I don't know what the fuck's going on. These two like and it's it's been reported that Virgil's in the conversation because there is a V in the group and it's because of the previous text. If you guys know on uh Life is Good, uh Drake says Virgil got the protect on my wrist doing front flips. <laughs> And there's an article of Virgil uh, designing a custom uh, Patek Philippe that it's green, it's like gem encrusted, and it's that's what he's referring to in the bars. If you look at the previous text messages, Kanye says, where's my green watch? I want you to make my diamonds do um, backflips. So I think he's just going at Virgil and just talking about, yo, what the fuck? Like, you give Drake this fucking Virgil Patek watch, where's my shit? So... Yeah, this shit is just, this This feels like a fucking soap opera. I'm glad Kendrick is like doing his own thing. And I'm actually more hyped for Kendrick than this Drake shit, Drake and Kanye shit. This shit is just pussy shit back and forth. Um, yeah, this is stupid. Uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm excited for the battle aspect. I hope it's Kanye versus Drake and no longer Pusha T. I know, I know Pusha T can rap, but Pusha T already spanked Drake. And Drake is kind of avoiding Pusha T. He's going Drake like Kanye because that's who he wants. So I want it to be Kanye West versus Drake. Pusha T obviously can get in there and drop bars, but it has to be Kanye West and Drake. Pusha T already whooped Drake's ass. We all know that. Um, for him to do that again, it just wouldn't be a surprise. It wouldn't be as entertaining as the first time. It would be entertaining. Don't get me wrong. I like battles. I like this. I like direct shots. I'm glad Drake... Sent a direct shot at Drake. I mean, Drake sent a direct shot at Drake. Drake sent a direct shot at Kanye. Because I'm tired of the subliminals and shit. Um, so yeah, I'll keep you guys updated. I personally don't give a shit. Just drop the albums already. 
Uh, I want to hear what the fuck, what's going on. And, you know, we'll see. I hope Kendrick drops, though. I want Kendrick to drop because Kendrick needs to shut this whole shit down. Tyga, so check it out. So OnlyFans, if you guys aren't familiar with OnlyFans, um, it started out as a, um, uh, a content platform that uh, for basically trainers that, could, that can get subscriptions to train people. And then it turned into a sexual content where just uh, people would sell, you know, nudes and particularly the females mostly would sell nudes and sexual content. And that's how the platform really blew up. Um, but OnlyFans recently reported that they're going to minimize or damn near pretty much erase all the sexual content because they're struggling to gain like investments from companies which is kind of like, why would you need, like OnlyFans should be a huge platform by now. They should be raking in millions upon, I don't even know billions because sexual content sells. Um, but Tyga decided to ditch OnlyFans and launch his own platform. So let's go over the article. Uh, even though Tyga has ranked in millions on OnlyFans, he's taken his talents elsewhere. On Friday, August 20th, Tyga announced the launch of his new platform, MyStar, which will serve as a competitor to the scandalous OnlyFans subscription-based website. Tyga deleted his OnlyFans account, which reportedly made him about $8 million on a $20 per month subscription package, comes on the heels of the platform's announcement that they plan to ban any sexually explicit content in the near future. Uh, Tyga said, uh, MyStar will become available officially in October, and Tyga is taking applications on the platform's website now for those looking for an invite. Uh, he's looking for content creators from all walks of life, including podcasters, comedians, athletes, and musicians. Users will even be able to sell their own NFTs, which is interesting. It's not just specifically OnlyFans sexually explicit content. He says, um, I know how many people make a lot of money on OnlyFans, and that's where most of their revenue is at, Tiger told Forbes. I want to give those people hope. I pay attention to the culture. I've always liked to be on the pulse and see where everybody's selling. It was just curiosity. My star is slated to take 10% of earnings rather than OnlyFans, which takes 20% off the top of its content creator's commission. In December, Tyga launched his own two raw model management company to help aspiring models' careers off the ground. That sounds like a fucking porn ring. <laughs> I hope he doesn't get caught up in like a fucking, like that one producer guy that he actually produced for Tyga a while ago. He got caught into a whole like prostitution ring. I hope that's not what Tyga's trying to do because... There's a fine line between creating a model agency with just women and then a prostitution ring because a lot of them try to pass a prostitution ring as a modeling agency, uh, but it's really a prostitution ring. Um, and Tyga has really found an audience with females and making sexually explicit content like that. So, I mean, making $8 million is something that is not slight work when it comes to OnlyFans. So... It's definitely a smart business move to create your own platform and then to offer NFTs and futuristic, like, why am I saying futuristic, but future, you know, products that are going to come out. Um, it's way ahead of its time in terms of allowing people to do all kinds of different things. OnlyFans was kind of, kind of got stuck in one box of just sexually explicit content. Like, people forgot the reason why it started in the first place. You can create OnlyFans and... Like, let's just say right now, I were to tell you guys, hey, I have an OnlyFans. The first thing that would come to your mind is I'm creating pornos. That's not the case. I can create OnlyFans and give people financial advice. I can create OnlyFans and teach people how to, I don't know, make houses. I don't know, whatever the case may be. It doesn't have to be sexually explicit content, but that's the first thing that comes to people's minds. And I think that's why OnlyFans wants to scale it down on the sexual content because they want to attract broader audiences because like i said if i were to say i have an only fans if you were to say you have an only fans people would automatically assume it's sexual content you know that's how it's viewed as in terms of only fans right now so i understand their approach but it's going to affect their business for a little while unless they can find a way to bounce back in a better way this next article is very interesting it's a study done by money.co.uk uh, um, and they studied the top artists in the world and which artists, I mean, which, which fans spend the most on their artists. 
not which fans, but which artist has the most money spent on them by their fans. That makes sense. Um, let's go over the article. It's no secret monetary fan support keeps the careers of both major and independent hip hop artists thriving, but there is a set limit on how much a listener has to spend in order to be considered uh, devoted to the cause. According to a new study by money.co.uk, an English price comparison website that specializes in findings from bank figures, mortgages, and more spending following the timelines of certain rappers could cost you more. So hip hop acts rounded out the top five of the study, which surveyed 65 of the world's biggest artists. Leading the credit charge was Eminem with an estimated $2,966 cost per fan. Slim Shady has been consistent, releasing uh, the deluxe version for his 11th studio album, Music to be Murdered by, uh, at the tail end of 2020, uh, and a sturdy merchandise drop along the way. Um, then it's Travis Scott with $2,244, then Drake at $1,543, then Kanye West at $1,395, then Kendrick Lamar at $1,231. All followed Eminem as the most expensive artist for fans to support. Several deciding factors went into the criteria, including calculating in the average price of an album download plus the average price of a 12-inch vinyl album, the cost of official merch products, the artist's average concert ticket price, and the value of authentic, authentic, I can't even, authentic, <laughs> authentic, basically, autified, uh, uh, authentic autographed items. Okay. Um, but there are a few other people like Jay-Z, Beyonce, Chris Brown, Silk Sonics, Bruno Mars, Future, and newly minted uh, Vegas resident uh, Usher, who's also minted an expensive list. Um, uh, they didn't prevent female hip hop stars from making the list too. Like Doja Cat's at one hundred ninety six dollars, Megan Thee Stallion's at two hundred twenty one, Cardi B's at two hundred forty three. So basically, what this list is saying: how much would it? How much does the average span? A, a span average fan spend on their favorite artists? And of course, Eminem stands are crazy. Shots Eminem stands. <laughs> But they spend the most. They spend roughly almost $3,000, $2,966. That's $3,000 per fan. And that weighs in the tickets, the merch, all that other stuff, vinyls, albums. Um, I'm surprised that it's not Kanye West, to be honest with you, because Kanye West, in terms of merch, at least charges the most from what I've seen. And his fans spend the most on that. He's number, what, one, two, three, four on the list. Drake has a higher spending. Travis Scott is right behind him and him. Which is no surprise. Travis Scott fans are they will they will spend the bag. So two thousand two hundred forty four dollars. That's interesting. And then you got Kendrick Lamar in there, even though he hasn't released or done anything in a while. He's at one thousand two hundred thirty one dollars. So yeah, it was just an interesting list, and I'm kind of surprised Eminem's at the top of that because Kanye West, Yeezys, uh, Yeezys are killing it with that clothing line. Drake, I know he doesn't he has OVO in terms of OVO clothing and all that, but I guess the music is where the value is in Drake's because he's killing it musically, of course. Uh, Travis Scott, though, has a lot of like packages that he delivers with albums and just events that are really unique. So I can understand that. But the ultimate surprise was Kendrick Lamar being up there because he hasn't really done anything in a while. So, you know, it's interesting if, you know, when this album comes out, if you drop something, are people going to support the shit out of it? Which I'm sure they will. So... Yeah, it was just an interesting article, interesting list. Uh, Kodak Black and the boxer uh, Gervonta Davis were in a plane crash, which was crazy to see. Uh, let's go over the article. Kodak Black is lucky to be alive. The Pompo Beach, Florida rapper was apparently on board a private plane with the boxer Gervonta Davis and a host of others on Saturday, August 21st, when the plane crashed shortly after takeoff. Davis took to Instagram Live to the aftermath of the crash where he detailed the only injuries he suffered were to his feet and buttocks Kodak wasn't lucky and took to wasn't as lucky and took to Twitter to inform fans of injuries in the flight he said I was on that jet with Gervonta and I'm not okay shit my neck my back all that <laughs> uh, the plane was in process of leaving the airport uh, tarmac when it shortly landed back on the ground according to TMZ although there weren't any other injuries reported Davis and others abroad speculated the crash occurred due to overheating with the plane and the flight maneuvers other pilots were using in the air so it basically took off a little bit and then it kind of just fell down, which is kind of lucky, man, because if that would have been higher up in the air 
and it just drops, which I don't know. I don't know how planes work. I'm not a fucking um, engineer over here, but if it was way higher up and they just plowed down, they all would have been dead. I'm pretty pretty sure. But it didn't. It didn't end up going that high up. It kind of just went up a little bit. If you look at the footage, which will be posted on the video version, the plane's like in the grass and it didn't really get damaged too much. Like it looked, it looks a little bit damaged, but it's not like, you know, it's, it's like an abrupt landing. That's all that really happened. It was an abrupt, unexpected landing. And of course you're going to, you're going to move. You're probably going to snap your neck a little bit, um, but it could have been way worse. So glad that they're okay. Uh, shout out to Kodak Black and Javante Davis. Uh, that would make me reflect on life 100% because that shit is scary. I don't, planes, I don't mind flying, but man, once you take off in the air, it's just you and whatever you believe in at that time because anything could happen. And I just couldn't imagine, man. I don't know. Like, I couldn't fathom me being on a plane and me knowing that shit's going down. I'm about to die. Like, just think about the Kobe incident. Like, it's sad. Like, that's a helicopter. It's not a plane, but helicopter i feel like it's worse because you know do you die like an instant death or do you suffer like i would assume an instant death because you just especially with the plane if it's high up and it just falls down to the ground it just immediately explodes like speaking of uh, leah that's one way leah died she she's the streaming services they dropped her one in a million album which uh, skyrocketed to number one on itunes so yeah she just died like that and just that's crazy that's a insane way to go out so I'm glad that they're okay. I'm hoping that you know, kind of gives them a reality check when it comes to life. Sometimes you 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 need moments like that to remind you how appreciative you are of life. Soldier Boy. So Soldier Boy, <laughs> Soldier Boy sometimes just says shit, and sometimes I don't believe him. Sometimes I do. But this time he had receipts. Um, so Soldier Boy claimed that he owns Atari now. So Atari is a big gaming company. Um. And he talked about how, you know, he uh, he said he's going to sell Soldier Boy Gaming and he's going to get $140 million and he's going to be the new CEO of Atari. And, um, well, Atari immediately denied that. So let's go over the article. Contrary to Soldier Boy's belief, he does not own Atari. The tech and video game company took to Twitter to refute claims the rapper made on Instagram Live earlier this week that he had acquired it. Atari tweeted, we know that the CEO of Atari is a dream job, but that honor belongs to Wade Rawson. Um, Soldier Boy took to Instagram to de- to make the now debunked announcement that he bought the company. He said, I am now the owner of Atari and his Instagram live. And then Soldier later explained that after they liked his Soldier Boy console, Soldier Boy game console, they gave him the reins and he planned on selling the company. They was real proud of me and what I did with the Soldier Boy game console. You know what I'm saying? I blew Soldier Boy game up. We're about to sell the company for like what it was. That's 100. I think I'm going to get 140 million. However, after the company reacted to Soldier Boy's claim, the rapper responded with some receipts saying that the company wanted to pay him in its own token currency to work with it. So let's go, let's play a little bit of the video. Um, let's play a little bit of the video. Uh, let's go. Let me find it quick. Soldier Boy just be saying all kinds of shit, man. First of all, nigga, fuck Atari, nigga. Second of all, nigga, I've been making millions from my ass soldier boy gang cost of mine and my own business. Atari, y'all pussy ass called me and said y'all wanted me to revamp y'all company. Bitch ass niggas, y'all know what the fuck I meant when I said I'm owning Atari. Atari is a public traded company. Can't no one man own the shit. So first of all, nigga, Atari, eat a motherfucking dick, nigga. Don't call my phone no more asking me to help y'all promote shit. Dead ass video game company. When nobody talk about no motherfucking Atari before yesterday. So Atari, suck a dick. Everybody at Atari, eat a dick. And I still got the money, nigga. Fuck y'all talking about. I'm finna show the motherfucking contract that y'all sent me. This puss ass contract. Talking about a million shares. Talking about all this weak shit. Fuck Atari, nigga. I'm rich off Soldier Boy game. Hold the fuck up. Let me show you this pussy ass contract they sent me. Hold on, man. I screenshot this put. Y'all got me fucked up. Pussy ass Atari. Hold on, man. Atari. Boom. They got a fucking deal right there, nigga. 
One million Atari, one million Atari, all this fucking Atari shit. Matter of fact, fuck this contract. Fuck Atari. Don't call me no more. Don't put my, don't attach my name to y'all name, bitch ass nigga. And I still got the money. Y'all sent me two contracts. Y'all said y'all wanted me to bring y'all company back because y'all was proud of what I did with Soldier Boy Game. Here go the contract right here, nigga. From Atari, a million, a million. So you know what? Fuck Atari, nigga. Rip the contract up. Rip the deal up. Suck my dick, nigga. Everybody follow at Soldier Boy Game. Y'all getting exposed. What that say right there? Soldier Boy, a million. Ah, uh, nigga. Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Soldier Boy's funny as fuck when he goes on rants, man. Man, fuck Atari, fuck the whole company. Yeah, he's. I didn't believe it. You showed the contract. It says a million Atari tokens, so I don't know what that means. That doesn't sound like it's shares. Sounds like they're trying to give him tokens for something. I don't know. Um, <laughs> but I mean, he did show receipts. I don't know if that was exactly the deal. I don't know if he actually got offered 140 million. I would love to talk to him about it. Shout out to Miami Mike. Bring him on the podcast. Uh, but man, it's entertaining at the end of the day. Great promotion for a Soldier Boy game, by the way. Um, so yeah, Soldier Boy is just entertaining. When he gets mad, it's very entertaining, man. I, I'll never forget the moment when he was on Everyday Struggle and he was talking about academics. He was like, shut the fuck up. And like, it was just, I don't know. He was going on a whole rant at that time. Like Drake, all that shit is just, Soldier Boy is entertaining as fuck, yo. He, no matter what, you're going to tune in because it's funny as fuck. And then that clip, that viral clip of him where he was about to fight one of his own homies and then some guy grabs him and he's like looking at him like <laughs> it was, man, people started doing memes of that. Oh God, that clip is hilarious too. So Soldier Boy's out there. He always has his name, you know, relevant and something. So um, this was interesting. I usually don't cover a lot of 6 9 stuff, but this was interesting because um, it had to do with Shadi and had to do with his son. And I kind of agree with this. I hope 6 9 actually takes this bet because... He owes it to Shadi after doing him dirty. Uh, Shadi did recently an interview on Academics' podcast, and he said he's, he would bet $1.5 million that his son will knock out 6 9 Now, the reason why I'm even talking about this is because I feel like 6 9 owes Shadi something for technically fucking him over and giving him 15, 20 years, whatever the case may be. He should at least box his son and help him make some sort of money. I don't think he will, but... Let's go over the article. Uh, the rapper's former manager, Shadi, proposed a bet in an upcoming episode of Academics' podcast, uh, speaking from a prison telephone. Shadi accused 6 9 of putting up a front and continued to blast him for cooperating with the feds in the racketeering case. He's trying to justify his actions, man. What I want to say is this. Dude, tell him you are scared. Let him know the truth, and you'll be all right, man. If you want to keep lying and perpetuating and acting like you a gangster, you're going to get what gangsters get man it's just that simple i wish him the best shoddy went out to shout out his associates who unlike 6ix9ine refused to snitch on their co-defendants he then told academics to send the following message 6ix9ine tell that guy i got 1.5 million he's talking about he's gonna knock people out i got 1.5 million that my son will knock him out clean however he want it don't go looking for meek mill or low dirk or none of them guys tell him holla at my son we got this so i would pay to see that and I feel like 6 9 owes Shoddy that. So that's why I wanted to talk about it. 6 9 boxing would be interesting. I wouldn't... I mean, would it be more entertaining to see 6 9 box Meek Mill or Lil Dirk? Yeah, but that probably won't ever happen. I don't think they'll ever be part of that circus. Uh, Shoddy's son, though, would probably do it because he's not as big of a star. Nobody really knows Shoddy's son. So uh, it would be more of a benefit to Shoddy and their his uh, family than Meek Mill doing it or Lord Dirk, you know. So, yeah, I'll keep my eye on this, and hopefully it happens, which a lot of claims of celebrity boxing have happened but never really happened. Uh, let's go over new music. So there's been a lot of new music released. Let's talk about the albums. Trippy Red dropped Trip at Night. I haven't checked it out. Uh, it has, let's see, 17 tracks. Features from Drake, Lil Uzi Vert, Playboy Cardi, Juice World, Tentacion, Polo G, Lil Dirk, um, Ski Master Slump God. So... Definitely got a slew of features there. You got Rod Wave dropping the SoFly Deluxe, which featured nine new... Wait, let me see. Make sure. I don't know how many tracks was it. Make sure I get this right. Um, uh, I guess... Okay, so, yeah, it features... Let's see. 
I don't know how many new tracks, man. This fucking thing isn't the way it's supposed to be. But the overall album has 28 tracks, and it features uh, features from Lil Durk and Kodak Black. Uh, Division and Ty Dolla Sign dropped Cheers to the Best Memories. This project has 11 tracks, features from Mac Miller, rest in peace, YG. That's really about it. You got Rick Hyde with Plates 2. This has 16 tracks. Dame Dollar, which is Damian Lillard, the basketball player, dropped his project, Different on Levels, The Lord Allowed, featuring Lil Wayne, Mosey, bl Blacklisted, um, Q-Tips, Noob Dog. Quite a few, man. Shout out to him for rapping and actually continuing doing it. Let's talk about the singles, new singles. You got Rod Wave, Time Heals, which is off the Lux. You got Gunna featuring Taurus, 9 times out of 10. Uh, you got Kevin Abstract. Sierra Knights. You got Chef G featuring Sleepy Hollow and A Boogie with a Hoodie Run It Up. You got Sway Lee featuring Janine Aiko in the Dark. You got Snot with Chrome Hearts. You got Babyface with Griot. And Arba featuring Playboy Cardi Unlock It. And that's really about it. Um, I, need, I need to check out a Trippy Red album for sure. I might do it like a Twitch reaction to it since I haven't listened to it yet. I got to do like quite a few reactions actually. Also, there's Eminem's shady artist that the new one, I think his name is um, Grip. Uh, let's see. Yeah, his name is Grip, and he's dropping his shady debut album. Uh, let's see. Let me forget the name of it and everything like that, just so I can give you guys an update. Uh, so... The album is called I Died For This Album. It drops this upcoming Friday, so August 27th. Um, let's see. I think he dropped a track list. It has Eminem on it, of course, and has a few other people. I think he dropped. Let me see, man. Why is there no track list on this? Um, let me go on his f Instagram. Yeah, this is the track list. Uh, it features Royce the Five Nine, Eminem, Big Rube, a bunch of other people who I can't even fucking pronounce. So yeah, check it out. It's a shady debut album, and I'll definitely check that out. I might even do a reaction to it. So let's talk about album sales. Updates on album sales. You got Doja Cat and number one going back up on the charts. I don't know why. Maybe a deluxe version, or maybe just people fucking with her even more. Because last week she was at number five. She's up to number one again. Uh, her album's called Planet Her, selling 59,000 copies uh, to get the number one spot. Olivia Rodrigo is still selling. Man, they're making a shit ton of money off this girl. She's at 57,000 copies. And number two, Billie Eilish, Happier Than Ever, is at 56,000 copies. And number three, The Kid Leroy, Fuck Love, is at number four with 52,000 copies. You got uh, Suicide Boys at number seven with long-term effects of suffering. 31,000 copies. That's some good numbers. Got Lil Baby and Lil Dirk, the voice of the heroes at number eight with 27,000 copies. Got YNW Melly, which I actually enjoyed his album, Just a Matter of Slime. Um, debuting at number 10 with 26,000 copies. That's pretty good for a locked-up artist who can't really promote. You got Polo G Hall of Fame at number 12 with 23,000 copies. You got Pop Smoke, Shoot for the Stars, Aim for the Moon at number 13. 23,000 copies is actually selling better than the newer album because the newer album isn't as good. So the newer album's at number 23, Pop Smoke Faith, at 16,000 copies. So you got the older album outselling it by, what? My math's pretty horrible, but about 7,000 copies. So I don't know why they ever released that. Um, now they don't even have music. Uh, you got Nas, King's Disease, at number 22 with 17,000 copies. Uh Lil Baby My Turn is still selling at number 16 with 21,000 copies. Uh, J. Cole, The Offseason, at number 25 with 15,000 copies. You got Migos Culture 3 at number 30 with 14,000 copies. And let's see. Yeah, Pooh Shicey, Shicey Season, number 45 with 12,000 copies. So, yeah. I'm curious to see what, um, what the other albums do. I'm really, I'm just... I'm curious to see what Kanye, Drake, and all of them do. That's going to be interesting. Because we know the numbers for J. Cole, and he did pretty good. So we'll keep our eye on that, definitely, for sure. That's it for this episode of the Diverse Mentality Podcast, number 76. 
Thank you guys for listening. Uh, Vito will be back on the next episode. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed it with just me. Sometimes I go on rants and just talk about random shit, but I like doing it. Sometimes I like doing it by myself, man. It kind of just lets me talk for no fucking reason. So uh, stream us, of course, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Deezer, you know the drill. YouTube, we're on there. Uh, highlights, we reached over 6,000 subscribers already on there. The main channel is over 3,000. So thank you guys so much for the support. I really appreciate it. The streaming numbers on audio are going up slowly too, which I appreciate. Uh, tell a friend, tell a friend. And be safe. Uh, take care of yourself. Mental health is important. Health in general is the most important. So take care of yourselves. Uh, if you ever need a break from things, always take a break, man. It's not worth it. So be safe. Have an amazing night, day, whenever you're listening to this. And peace out.